Okay, good. I was a neighborhood chapter in Mora. I wanted to know the magical word. I didn't want to be a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little and the people would be screaming and say, he's going to kill us, we're going to crash the wave. The, the funny part of it is I couldn't hit him if I wanted he to. He could ride the shock uh, wave. The, yeah, literally, like so a dolphin. There's so over that huge ante. You, you, you can literally can ride the shock wave like a dolphin does on, on the bow, oh, bow wave of a ship. Oh. And he used to sit up there and he'd go like this. Look, Ma, no hands! And everybody would die up there because he was riding that bow wave as he goes along. <laughs> A lot of stuff, a lot of flying around the world together. Uh, yeah. I was fortunate enough to fly uh, Iron Annie up from Miami on her first instrument flight after, after, we, rebuilt after we rebuilt the aircraft yeah. on a flight up, which was absolutely amazing because this was holding his stomach, screaming and laughing at me because I'm looking for clouds and every other airplane in the sky is trying to get away there's from clouds, it. Every cloud he can find. Oh, look, there's a cloud. Quick, jump into it like that. We, we, take, off from my, we take off from Miami and so this is uh, JU-52 uh, uh, calling airborne uh, for departure control. And the guy says, a what? And I grabbed the mic. <laughs> and he said, what is that? This is November 52 JU. <laughs> what type of aircraft is that, sir? This is a JU-52 N-52 JU. He said, please go away. The Jets said, you have got that mic. <laughs> <laughs> so he spoke well, in Polish. There's a lot of good. We, we, we all break over here. forth and through the clouds, and the guys were saying, do you have a flight plan? He said, that's a flight plan. <laughs> hello? Hello? I can't hear you. I can't hear those there. And we did this all over the damn state until they finally got to know. We were the only ones to file a flight plan in Florida. We'll take the Gill Brick Road from Gainesville down, the I-75, the I to the Sunshine State Parkway, hang the left to 30 degrees, get down to Disney World, we want a 90 degree cut to the left to come over the field at 1,200 feet, and that's how we file our flight plans. And everybody took it. They knew us. <laughs> well, that's one of the neat things. When, when people found out Marty was in the airplane, you were in another world of aviation. They said, you know, these guys are absolutely crazy. We better clear the airspace. We better get everybody on the ground. We possibly can get down. Because we don't know where they're going. And I never knew it then. You would say, turn left, and I'd say, okay. First time we came into Lakeland, the great big sun and fun air show is about 500 airplanes trying to land. And you come in over the lake, come over the smokestack and a power plant. And the guy said, Marty, why don't you go in and first? I call the tipper. Uh, Lakeland Town is 52 JU. I got only got three turning and two smoking. And they thought we were four engine. JU 52 cleared to land immediately, and 300 airplanes landed with us. Everyone would say, Marty, land long, land long. And we cleared the skies. So they said, we'd like to go back up and do it again, get them all down. This, this aircraft is amazing. Wherever we traveled throughout the United States, and the airplane just drew people so much. And uh, probably one of the most gratifying times in my life was uh, Marty called me and said, I want you to meet me down at Pompano. I said, what for? He said, what the difference does it make? I said, you're asking me down at Pompano. I know, I know. So I showed up in Pompano, and I said, what's going on? He said, just take it easy, stand here. And about 30 minutes after I got there, a man came off the airplane. It was Mr. Yunkers, the man that built this airplane. And I had goose pimples on my body. And I tried to think in my it life. Came, it came from Germany just came, for this. To fly with the airplane. And uh, uh, the feeling I had in my body, it, you go back and you say the first kiss or your, some of the first things that happen, the first time you go to Catholic Church and hear the choir and smell the incense work, everything on your body starts moving. I felt this, I said, you know, here's the guy that designed and built this airplane and he's walking towards me and he comes up to my wife and puts his arms around her and kisses her. He says, been you're 81 years old, you can do this without getting in trouble. And he flew with Marty in the airplane, he got tears in his eyes, and he, wow. he says, Mr. Caden, thank you. What you have done for me, we kept he's, her alive. You kept her alive, when she was brand new from the fact that she didn't fly like this. And, you know, it's the moving moments, fooling around with a guy like this and being around him, uh, every day is something new, and every minute you're waiting for something to happen. Caden just sort of erects things from nothing. Flying is for people. Staying on the ground is worms. <laughs> worms don't fly. Tell me that. <laughs> tell me that. <laughs> Give me that thing about flying. Well, let me tell you, there are a number of things. People talk about flying. And some there, sometimes there are birds that fly. And the parrot talks a lot, but you don't fly very well. And one thing about flying you cannot beat. I can lie to you. We can crap anybody on the ground anywhere. But if you lie to your airplane, 
gonna fly kill you. And there is no better truth than that. And there's something about being anywhere from 5,000 feet to 70,000 feet above the earth, knowing you're flying on the edge of going into other worlds. And that belonged to the pilots long before the word astronaut was ever coined. Okay. Yeah. It's the only way. It's the only way. I can't believe this could happen. There's going to be a king of a whole damn bunch of these things over here. That's what I like about it. The wind walk was just wow, you know. That's the only airplane that could do it. It was a great Christmas cake walk first, but Bill was in there and I lost him that day because he got flipped out the back door and the airplane snapped on me. But you know, it's not just flying, it's a whole bloody way of life. Right. And someone said, Well you pilots all think you're somebody special. No, we don't. We know we are. <laughs> there ain't no two ways about it. What? One of the things that's amazing that people can't realize is what happens when an arm even would come out of an airplane, or a finger, what it can create, or a slat, a half inch wide, a quarter inch stick put on the leading edge of an airplane can change the whole configuration. Marty and Dee have a shot of me taking off at one of the air shows in Lakeland. Okay, that's good. Let's start again. Just so you have a little understanding of what can happen with air and what can be created. We had a four ship team that we flew with called the Jaybirds. We were flying out of Lakeland, Florida for a big air show and each of the Jaybirds took a specialist jumper in the back of the aircraft and we were gonna dump all four of them out at the same time. Marty was gonna circle them because he had this vast smoke and because of the, uh, the aircraft that are there and the danger of that area, we really needed a lot of warning. We needed a pilot in the air circling us that had a good awareness of air show technique. We took off on a roll and I took, I was in a number four position because I had the man with the Batman suit on and he was going to jump out of the airplane and show people that you could actually fly like Batman. But we take off and I had just gotten the tail off the ground and just got ready to rotate and he stood up in the back seat to show off to the crowd and he completely blanked out my flying ability of the airplane. I had full aileron, I had full right rudder, and Marty got a picture out of the Yonkers of an eddy coming off of my left wing, which was, you'd think the other wing would be down, this far from hitting the runway with me with full power pulling as hard as I could, and this damn fool in the back going like this, and laughing about it. So it, it taught me an awful lot at that time. What can happen? And never, and never take a guy up who laughs too much in your airplane. That's one of the things you learn real quick. That was as close as I'd come to death. That was very, very close. That was almost buying it because we were just at that speed. If the airplane would have went over, we were at about 80 mile an hour, 85 mile an hour, which would probably been a fatality. Well, Jack and I have been flying together with a Ju-52 and his SNJ now for about 17 years. And in those 17 years, we've had a chance to practice all kinds of things, air shows, low altitude, high altitude. And I firmly believe that without the work we had done together, we never could have done the wing walk. And that's why I put him on top of the whole crowd that day when we did the world record. He became the guy who was riding shotgun on top of everybody because once I had those people outside, I didn't dare move that airplane anywhere but straight ahead and coming on down. So you get to count on each other absolutely. It's like a foxhole in the sky. Got it. Got it. <laughs>